just finished up implementing this little part of it here. So I'll be, if I press the 1, 2, and 3 key, corresponds with 1, 2, and 3, it will update these buttons. So 1, 2, and it's doing it for all of them uh, of this, not for these, notice, because those are the old original ones, the demo ones. But then 2, 2, 3, and of course this one turns on because the combo is set. Two, one, two, three, and this one didn't turn on because the combo is not set to one, two, three, it's set to seven, five, two. So what I want to talk about this time is clicking them to function because it's a real pain in the neck to have to type in one to hit the arrow, hit these keys and have them all work. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up a trace for objects and then based on that trace we are going to call the increment function. So if you remember in here there's a bunch of functions and this increment function is being called here. So what I'll go ahead and do is delete these because I really don't want those to be doing anything now. I know that the blueprint works. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And you don't really need uh, input enabled so you can go ahead and clean that out. Compile and save this and you'll be done with this for a while. What you do need though is a pawn. So what I recommend doing is uh, looking at let's go up to content I'm going to put it like this because that's how I prefer doing it. And so I have this my default pawn. Where did I get this? Well what I did was I created a game mode so let's go ahead and do that this is a blueprint class. It's just a game mode blueprint class. We'll call it new game mode. Make sure you name it something unique so you can remember what it is. Uh, and if you open it the second time, you'll get this. If you open it the first time, and you, all those details will be over here. I just prefer to look at it like this. Save. Okay. Now it should be... Oh, whatever. Do this. Okay. So default pawn class, uh, you can choose this. Default pawn is what it will start on, and that's great, but you can't really edit that. So what we need to do is actually find that. So to find that, you've got this nice little button, and that'll take you to where in this engine content we have a default pawn. Now, you can't just copy this in as a blueprint because it's a C++ class, but what you can do is create a blueprint class based on default pawn, which is really nice. So we're going to do that, and we're going to stick it in our tutorial folder here. And we're going to call it my default pawn tutorial, so we have a unique name to find in the game mode. And there we go. Now we have created, and we can turn off engine content. So let's go ahead and file, save everything. Okay, so in this game mode, what we want to do is in the details, find my default pawn tutorial. And that's going to now allow us to, when we hit play, it'll put us in that pawn, assuming we actually set the game mode. So, new game mode is what we just did. New game mode, file, save on. And then if you hit play, now we're in that pawn. And it's hard to tell the difference, but we are. And one difference is when I was in the lock game mode, you'll notice that I have a little uh, what is it, a reticle that I put out here. And that can click on this, but if I change it to this new game mode, you'll notice I don't have a reticle and I can't click on anything. So let's cure that. Let's fix that. Um, exit. And now we can edit this because this is a blueprint class that was based on that C++ class. So let's go ahead and hop in here and we'll hit open full blueprint editor. And what we want to do here is add the input event click. So if you haven't dealt with input events yet. Uh, this is set up in the project settings. You can set up an axis mapping or an action mapping. I just set one up that's called click and it's associated with the left mouse button. Um, if you don't know how to do that, there's a bunch of tutorials out there. 
highly recommend watching those. So we're going to enable input and we're going to go ahead and say get player control and at this point I do recommend going in and creating a player controller just so that you have something we'll call this tutorial player controller and then in your game mode just go ahead and in the details for the player controller set it to tutorial player controller so that's going to set this tutorial player controller to your player zero and then set the pawn to read off of that so that you can be sure that you're actually getting your inputs save all and then if you ever need to edit anything in the player controller you can absolutely do so in here okay so what we need to do though is in here I'm going to add a camera this will override the default kit that's being used on the player controller and we'll go ahead in the viewport we'll just leave it where it is for now file and now if you play you'll notice that I can no longer seem to control myself in any reasonable manner so what's happening is I'm still rotating but when I press forward now I'm going off to the left and then if I scroll to the right now when I press forward I am going who knows where and that's because the camera is not tracking with the with the controller so what we need to do is set it so that that isn't happening so let's go ahead and put this under there and then in the, I believe it's the movement component, maybe it's here, you want to use controller rotation pitch, yaw, and roll, and since the camera is now a member, is attached to this, is an, a member of the mesh component, it should rotate along with that. So you set these and that will actually bring the rotation of the controller into this. So I believe now Yes. So now we have our own camera, and that's useful if we want to set up a reticle. So let's go in here to the viewport. I can't really see. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and raise the camera up. It doesn't really matter. You don't want to raise it too high up, so then you'll get a little bit of awkward motion because it's rotating around this. But that's, this should be fine. And what we want to do is put a reticle in here and to do that there's a bunch of different ways you can use a HUD object the easiest way in my opinion is just to do a text render and move that out not very far and up until it's at the same height yeah, as that and then we'll go ahead and set this text the details to say just plus compile save and we'll exit that and save everything hopefully that'll get it to show up as a plus in the viewport yep of course that's going to be off because it's centered so what we'll do is get it generally centered up and we'll shrink it down say 0 0.2 0 0.2 that's still going to be awfully big, so we'll do 5. I think that's what I had it set to. And it will take this grid lock off and just center it up a little bit more and raise it. And that'll do for now. It doesn't need to be exact until we get the ray trace in, and that, then we'll line it up with the, not the ray trace, sorry, the line trace. So now we should have a little reticle. You notice it is off center. I think center is probably about here, and it's up there. But that's okay. And unless you're really, really close, farther than the collision will allow, it's going to stay there. So that's the easiest way to set up a reticle, in my opinion. Um, not the, maybe the nicest way, but it works for what we're doing. So let's go ahead and save all. And so you notice you still can't click on anything. So what we need to do is, on click, we're going to line trace for objects. And what type of objects? Well, it's going to be world 
oops, make array. It's going to check for all the objects in the array of world dynamic objects, which is something that the engine has access to. And where are we going to start this? Well, we want to get the the world location of this. And we want to get the forward vector of this. And we need it to be, well, let's say, multiplied by, oops, multiplied by, well, let's say 5,000, just to make it really long. It probably doesn't need to be 5,000. This will be how far away you want to be able to click on the buttons. And what we're going to do is we're going to add these two together. New. Add vector plus vector. I think it needs to be this way. And that's going to be the end point of our array trace. And where's the start point of our array trace? That's simple. It's just the world location of the camera. So, again, what is this doing? It's starting from the world location of the camera, so the origin of the camera, and it's running in a line along the forward vector at a length of 5,000 plus the world location of that camera. And you need the world location because otherwise this will be going the correct direction, but it'll be going from the origin of the map. So you're going to add to the origin of the map, the world location, and that's going to center you up, plus then you're going to go along the forward vector 5000 and or 5000 times each of the vector components and that will give you your endpoint. So what we'll do is change this to persistent so that we can see our traces and we'll play. So there it is. That's the trace there. So if I say do this, you'll see now there's a line. It's going from where I was to this. And of course it goes straight through because this is a world static. I'm not tracing for that, but if I do this, oh, I'm awfully far off. Yeah, there we go. It's a hit. Everything green is still tracing, but it's found the first object. So that's the hit. I think if I go through a bunch of them, so bad and the reticles so far off. Yeah, so I think it only counts the hit on the first one because this is going through both. Yes. So let's go ahead and line up that reticle now. Let's get a... So, it's the reticle is up too far on the right and up of the camera. So let's go ahead and move that down. And viewport so we can come over here and go to text render. Remember it's up too far to the right, so let's go down to about 39 and we'll go ahead and put this at just about zero, so I think we could probably just do that manually. Zero. That'll probably center it. And I think, if I remember correctly, 39 makes sense. I think it was 39.5. This is where I ended up liking it on the last version, just to speed this up. But you can fiddle with it all you want. So now I think, yep, it's hitting this pretty darn close. So those are the hits for this. And it goes pretty far, you can see. You don't want it to be that far. So we'll go ahead and change this down to say 500, so that'll be one tenth as long. I'll we'll play just to get some idea of how far 500 is. That's still hit from all the way there, all the way there, and it's not hitting from there. So you probably want it more like 200. Yep, that hits. That doesn't hit. That goes about that far, which makes sense. That seems playable. So, but it's not doing anything now. And so, what we want to do is go in here and out hit going to break this, so we can see the hit results and look at all of this stuff. So, I just do this break. You don't have to. You can actually do. I think get maybe not. Oh yeah, hit. Nope. I thought you could just directly grab any of those. Anyway, you break it and you have access to all of the things. 
And this is actually fairly simple. We're going to cast this to combo lock parent, I think. What did I call in the original parent combo lock? And here it's called combo lock parent, which is what we want. Okay. So hit actually going to cast to so if that's what it was, this is going to be combo lock parent. There we go. And if it fails, we don't want to do anything, because it might hit all sorts of things that we don't want to have any action on. But if it finishes, then what we want to do is do sequence, and we'll add a pin. And we're going to call the increment. sequence just the increment function on whatever it can point as oh I know why if We're going to have to get a reference to all three of the buttons here. So we'll do button one. I forgot about this part. Get button two. And get button two. Okay. And the reason is because uh, this component is not going to. I think, well, actually. Yeah, I think you need to check to see if they're equal. So, And it can check the equality against this, but it just can't pump straight into there. So what we need to do is set this up to if this is true. So if the component that it hit was button 1, then we want to do this. So this is why I do, I do need a sequence. The sequence is going to go up to here. And then if, and we're going to add a third. If. And you could probably put all this into a function as well. That might be a nice touch um, if people want to tackle that. Equal. This component. This component. And there we go. There we go. And we're going to copy this. And make sure we set the target correctly. Okay. And button three will come into here. Button two will come into here. And then we need to actually execute these. So there we go. Execute. Execute. And I think this is everything you need, believe it or not. So this file, save all, just to be careful. And then just play. So now, if I fly over here, I think if I get the hit, but it didn't. That one executed. That one executed. That didn't execute. So two and three are working. And I seem to have messed something up for one, and I'm not sure what it is. So I'm checking. Oh, I'm not putting button one in. So there we go. So I think the. One on the left here has a combo of one, two, three, so let's try this. Two, three, that one. And then I think this one's seven, five, two still. Seven, five, oops, yep, it worked, but one, two, three, two. Yeah, there you go. So now we've got this, and we can see that we don't need the ray traces anymore, so we'll turn those off right here. We can change the draw debug type to none, compile, save, and we're done. That was a short video, 20 minutes. Took less time than I thought. So that's how to set up clicking. Um, next video I will set it up so that it 
I will show how to extend the this so that it actually opens and closes the door. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be posting this video in a couple hours here. And if you have any questions, let me know, and I will answer them in the comments. Or if there's enough questions, I might make a follow-up video, because this is a lot of material, and there's a lot of space for stuff to go wrong, uh, a lot of fidgety stuff that you got to mess with. So, yeah, that's, that's it. Um, I appreciate you watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. That's, I guess, the thing that everybody says, so sure, why not? Have a good day, guys.